Good morning, friends. It's great to be with you this Tuesday morning. I want to encourage you to grab your hot coffee, grab your hot tea, whatever it is you need to get going this morning, and let's dive into God's Word together. We're going to be looking at the power of communion as we pick up the story in Luke chapter 22, picking it up in verse 14. This is an incredible time where Jesus is having what we would call the Last Supper, the Passover meal with His disciples, and there's so much just richness in this text that I'm just excited to get in this morning. As we do every day, if you have any prayer requests this morning, I want to encourage you to type those into the comments section. If there's anything we can pray for you, please type those in. And when you see a prayer request come across, be sure to reply to it so that we can be encouraging one another in prayer this morning. And if you're with us in the podcast version, you can always email us at biblecast at tfc.org. All right, here we go. Let's just dive right into the text this morning. So Luke 22, verse 14. It says, Jesus arrived at the upper room. Uh, when Jesus arrived at the upper room, he took his place at the table along with all the apostles. Now we see here that Luke is really kind of setting the scene here, and it says, When Jesus arrived. Now you remember, Jesus had sent two of his disciples down yesterday, what we talked about yesterday morning, just earlier this day, uh, for him to go find the place in the upper room. He'd gone to great lengths to arrange this moment. Jesus has been looking forward to this, and He's been planning this moment. He wanted to make sure it wasn't interrupted by Judas's evil schemes, and so He's uh, been very secretive about it because He really, really wants to have this special time with His disciples. And this is something that He's going to institute. He's going to set up what we call communion as He goes through this Last Supper. It says, He told them, I have longed with passion and desire to eat this Passover lamb with you before I endure my sufferings. So we know Jesus is aware He's about to go to the cross. He knows this very night. Uh, in fact, He's going to be uh, arrested and taken into the temple courts, beaten and ultimately put on the cross here in a very short period of time. So He knows what's about to happen to Him. He knows where He's going. And so He's gone to great pains to have this moment, kind of this last moment that He's going to have with His disciples before He leaves the earth. And there's several really important things that we're going to look at today and tomorrow that Jesus is wanting to pour into His disciples before He leaves. But He knows that He's going to endure His sufferings. He says, I promise you that the next time we eat this, talking about this Passover meal, the Seder meal, we will be together in the banquet of God's kingdom realm. And I love what he's talking about here. He's saying, look, this is not the last time we're going to do this. This is maybe the last time we're going to do this on the earth, but there's going to be a time we're going to be in God's kingdom realm, and we're going to have this banquet together. So it says that he raised a cup and gave thanks to God and said to them, take this and pass it on to one another and drink. I promise you that the next time we drink this wine, we will be together in the feast of God's kingdom realm. So twice he talks about when they have the Seder meal, when they drink the wine, and uh, as they go forward. Now, it's something to understand. You know, the, the thing that Luke is leaving out of this story is he's leaving out some of the details of a Passover meal. And to really understand what's happening and some of the things that Jesus is saying, we have to understand how the Jewish people celebrate Passover. And it's the same way they celebrate Passover today. It's the way they've been doing it for thousands of years. And there's several different things that happen during a Passover meal. And so we know that as they're going through this meal, as they're celebrating what they would call the Seder meal, as they are celebrating their uh, the Passover, means the time when the angel passed over the, Egypt, the Israelites when they were about to leave Egypt. You remember God, after the 10 plagues had come on Egypt and God was about to deliver them from their slavery, the very last thing they did on the very last plague that was coming which was the death of the firstborn, what they would do is they would, they, God told them to sacrifice a lamb and to cook it up and very quickly and make bread without yeast because they didn't have time. It was a hurried up moment, kind of pack up quick, we're about to leave. And they would put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And when the death angel came through, everywhere the blood was, the, the angel would pass on and go to another home and would not disturb that home. And of course, we know that was the ultimate plague that allowed Pharaoh to let the uh, Israelites go. And so that's what they're celebrating at this meal. So everything about this meal is celebrating the Passover of God's wrath on the, Israel, uh, on the Israelites and on the Egyptians. And where the blood was sacrificed, where the blood was on the doorpost, there was a passing over. And so we totally see what Jesus is talking about here. He's, about, I, he's going to be the Passover lamb for us. His blood that He's about to shed in less than 24 hours from this story is the blood that is going to allow us to be passed over from the judgment of God, to be forgiven for all of our sins. It's just incredible what He's doing. It says, 
uh, in the text, Then he lifted up a loaf, and after praying a prayer of thanksgiving to God, he gave each of his apostles a piece of bread, saying, This loaf is my body, which is now being offered to you. Always eat it to remember me. Okay, now we're getting down to even more of the amazing things that are going on at this Passover meal. So two things that we need to understand very quickly this morning. The bread that Jesus was talking about was a very special piece of bread. You notice how just a minute ago it says that he took the drink, he blessed it, and he passed it around. Jesus, as the kind of leader, would have been the one that was facilitating the Seder meal. And there were five cups of wine that were drank during, or that were offered up during a Seder meal. Four of them were drank. One was set aside for Elijah. We'll get to that one here in just a minute. So the four that were drank, there were two that were drank at the beginning of the meal, and there were two that were drank at the end of the meal. And those two, the, the, all of the four cups, each had a different meaning. And the disciples would have known this. They've been having this meal their entire lives. The first one was the cup of sanctification. The next was the cup of deliverance. The next was the cup of redemption. And then comes the cup of praise. And then the last one, the one that's offered up to Elijah, is calling in the time of judgment, which is the cup of wrath. And that one was not drank because it was the bringing in of the judgment. And so we see this, these five cups that were there on the table. Four of them would have been drank. But then at the end of the meal, there was a very special bit of the matzah that was brought. It's called the afikamen. And it was in the very beginning of the meal, there would have been three matzah uh, loaves, three lots of crackers, if you will, that would have been stacked one on top of the other. So they would take the one out of the middle, break it, and then they would give it to one of the children who wrap it in a special cloth. And they would go hide it somewhere in the house. And so what would happen is this middle piece of matzah was broken, was separated, was hidden, and then at the very end of the meal, that piece of matzah was brought back and it was celebrated as the dessert. That's the bread that's taking place here. Now think about that. The one in the middle, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Son was taken out, broken, hidden, returned, and celebrated. It's talking about Jesus and what He's about to do in the tomb. It's talking about who He is. And look, He says He lifts it up, and, he, and He's holding up that afikam and says, Now this is my body, which is now being offered to you. When I, you know, Do this in remembrance of me. Always eat it to remember me. The Afikamen is talking about Jesus. Today, the Jewish people celebrate Passover, and they still do this. The Afikamen is hidden. They don't realize they're talking about their very Messiah. They're talking about Jesus when they eat that at the end of the meal. All right, let's keep going. He says, then after supper was over, he lifted the cup again. Now we're back towards the last two cups. This cup is my blood of the new covenant I make with you, and it will be poured out soon for all of you. Now this is most likely the cup of redemption. He's holding up the cup of redemption where God promised to redeem <clears throat> the Israelites. And Jesus is saying, I'm the one that's going to redeem you. I am the redemption. I am the one that makes sense on this. He continues and he says, but I want you to know that the hands of the one who delivers me to be the sacrifice, so he knows he's going to be the sacrifice, are with mine on the table this very moment. He's of course talking about Judas. The Son of Man must now go where He will be sacrificed, but there will be great and unending doom for the man who betrays Me. The apostles questioned among themselves which one of them was about to do this. And that's where we're going to leave the story today. I want to go back though to that cup of wrath. We know that Jesus leaves here. We'll see this as we keep going through this passage, that Jesus then heads to the Garden of Gethsemane with the rest of the disciples. Judas leaves to go do what he needs to do to turn in Jesus. But they, the rest of them go on to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, where Jesus prays, and He prays for what? This cup to pass. What is the cup that He's talking about? He's talking about the cup of wrath. Jesus, in this very night, everything that He did surrounding this dinner was saying, pointing to Himself, even praying that, hey, if this cup can pass, let it pass. But Father, Your will be done, not mine. And we know that as Jesus went to the cross, He did. He drank the cup of wrath. He drank that fifth cup that was the cup that was the cup of judgment so that we could be free and we could be clean and we could be passed over from the judgment of God. All of that is symbolized in this one meal. What a great celebration that we have every time we get to take communion together to remember exactly what Jesus did. So Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the deliverance that comes, for the empowerment that comes, and the strength that comes. And I just release a blessing on everyone this morning, God, that we would go to work, we would go to school, we would go where you've called us to go, filled up, empowered by the blood of Jesus to be exactly who you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. We love you. Have an amazing day. God bless.